Hello, this is David James, and we're back uh, looking at Bibles, reviewing what different Bibles do and don't do and do for you. Um, this particular one is called a um, Thompson Chain Reference, and the Thompson Chain has been around for decades upon decades, and it was a very popular Bible even when I came to the Lord 40 years ago. And um, this particular version um, is a goatskin cover. It's, it's beautifully bound again you know, the gold leaf, thin, thin paper, um, you know, the red and the black contrast, gilt edging, um, the ribbed binding. This is, you know, this Bible approaches $300 Canadian. It's, it's pricey, but you can get the exact same thing for 50 bucks on Amazon in a hardcover. So, you know, no big deal. Um, so if you like that thing and you can afford it and it's useful to you, go ahead and get it. I, I just happen to like nice books and nice Bibles, so um, I own uh, a few like this. Now, I want to show you how this works. Now, this is worth talking about because especially if you're um, new to the faith and you don't know, like, you've never heard of this stuff. I mean, you know, when I came to the Lord, I didn't, you know, I, I, I heard about King James and I guess I knew there was a Bible. And my dad gave me one, my very first Bible, which I treasured. And, but besides that, I don't even know if there is another Bible. Like what, what is, what else is there, right? You don't, you just don't know, right? So this particular one is the King James, but you can get um, the Thompson chain in many and most popular translations. And it works the same way. And how it works is you have text down the middle, you have um, references down the side in black and red highlighted and uh, it really pops off the page. It's really, really good. Um, so you're reading along here, um, and you're in 1 Kings 3, 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for yourself, nor hast asked the life of your enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. So, beside that, it gets topical. So, this is speaking of King Solomon, and you've got a, a side note that says unselfishness. So this speaks of the unselfishness of Solomon when he came to the Lord and asked for help. Um, it also speaks to unworldliness. So now beside unselfishness, there's a number 3227. So with that number 3227, I go to the numerical index at the back. And I look for 3227. And it's right here at the top, unselfishness. And unselfishness shows several scriptures in red, several in black, like there's lots of them. And the ones in red are the ones that, um, the ones that made this Bible. They consider those the most important in the bunch, but it lists all of them. Just like a concordance lists every scripture in its place, this one lists all of them. And um, so they're all there. And so unselfishness, and then it lists Abraham, and it shows all about Abraham, uh, self-will submission, everything about it um, with their scripture references and a piece of the scripture reading is listed. So this is extremely useful for um, Bible study in general. The other thing I want to show you what this does, it has um, a topical index right after the book of Revelation. And how that works is the alphabetical index, say you're, okay, say you're just sitting around and you think, what does the Bible say about criticism? You go along here and say, oh, now that word criticism doesn't occur in the Bible, but it's a subject that the Bible covers in many different ways, right? So you go along and say, okay, criticism, criticism, ah, fault finding. And then you have the number 662 next to it. So then you just flip to your numerical index and you find 662. OK. 
And we're looking for criticism. There you have fault finding 662 of Christ. And then it has Matthew and several other scriptures listed. Um, there's like 15, 20 scriptures listed there. And so that's where you go. So you basically follow the chain. So if I go to Matthew 9, 11, I'll find something else that's related to it that'll take me down that rabbit trail. So there's no end to the study you can do through something like this. This is really good. If you say, well, does the Bible say anything about that? Well, this will be a good way for you to practically get in the word study it for yourself to find out, does the Bible actually say that? Now, um, this one is really good. Now, one that you might consider, um, it's been around for many decades as well, is written by um, uh, an old guy by the name, well, I don't know if he's old anymore, he went to heaven. His name, Finnis Jennings Dake. It's called the Dake Dick's Annotated Reference Bible, and it has a concordance. Now, what makes this, I put my own Bible tabs. I was so into this back in the day, I didn't even, I don't think I even knew there were Bible tabs. Maybe I couldn't buy them. Um, I made my own Bible tabs and, and, and stuck them here to, the, um, to find the books easy, because this is actually a difficult Bible to flip through because there's so many notes in it. So, it, this thing reads old timey. Now the print's small, but you can actually buy this in a larger print. This one is oh, this one must be forty years old at least, and I used it a lot, a lot, a lot. Like some of it's even almost starting to yellow. But so what Dakes did is he has it's called it's an annotated reference Bible. So it's a complete reference system um, that lists notes and other additional scriptures down like it's a wealth of knowledge now i don't agree with everything he says and believes and and and, and put forward and some of his scripture references seem to be obtuse to me but overall it's it's really super valuable like for instance if you're reading the book of genesis it's just particularly helpful so you're reading along and you see it oh wow there's some crazy stuff in there especially genesis 6 okay so you're reading along in there what's going on here and you're going along, going along, 50. Oh my gosh, summary of Genesis. Ah, notes on Genesis, notes on Genesis, notes on Genesis. Again, 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 again. It's got copious notes in Genesis about all the main topics and other places where you can study out of it, you know? So it's not just like a, a short summary. It just literally talks about everything. You know, God, God made man, but man is made, not created. So for instance, little tidbit, man is not a created being. He's made. That's a whole different topic. Now, um, I show you that because it's really fun, and I got a lot out of this, especially in early years, and I still use this. Now, there are electronic versions available for everything that I've talked about, but I want to quickly mention um, this. Now, this is a newer version of something that it was invaluable. Now, this is the biggest mother of them all. This has every Bible. This is every word in the Bible listed in it right down to the ands and where they are, and the eyes and the ifs, and the buts, they're all here. And they list it, and exactly where they are, and they list, so if I look, want to look up Uriah, um, and so Uriah was actually a fellow that David, uh, King David, um, had murdered, so because he wanted his wife. Now that's a story. Um, and it talk about Uriah and all the places where his name occurs, and you can actually find it. Um, and, oh, here's, here's one, and, you want to know where all the ands are? I wasn't lying. They're all <laughs> listed pages and pages of them, right, if you ever cared. So, um, now, um, what's interesting about this is it also has a Hebrew and Greek dictionary attached to it. So, strong um, is the standard. Strong's is the gold standard when it comes to basic Bible study interpretation. 
So his um, Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic dictionary. So his Hebrew dictionary is actually a Hebrew and Aramaic dictionary. You remember I talked about the Passion Bible, which is translated from Aramaic scripture. So I'm here to tell you the Hebrew and Aramaic dictionary speaks of most Old Testament scripture, most of it being Hebrew. It gives you the Hebrew word and it tells you, it gives you the spelling, but but it gives you the phonetical spelling. Like, in other words, there's this word pithgam. Well, it tells you how to say it. And you say it pithgam. So there's certain ways you say words, you know, and I'm not, I don't, I don't study these things, but I can look up words just like anyone else can look up words. So the Strong's Dictionary is critical for word study. And I'm going to show you something on top of this that is much easier to use than opening up this book. Now, back in the day, all we had was this book, and you actually had to physically turn to it. Okay, so um, here's the Greek dictionary. And again, the same thing applies. All the Greek words listed with their corresponding number. So the, cor the number corresponds to a Greek word, or in the Hebrew dictionary, the number corresponds to the Hebrew word. Okay, and each one of those is applied to an individual word in the scripture. Now, join me on the next one, and I'm going to show you how to use all of this electronically. So it's at your fingertips at all times. And we're going to be opening up um, an app that I use constantly that will help you immeasurably. So this, this is still useful, and you need to know how to use it. But this is also the Dark Ages, and I'm so glad I don't have to look up words in here anymore. And I'm going to show you a better way. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.